So we're at the last quarter final, Karen, and the best all Ireland win in Hurling Champions in the last 16 years. Fair to say, Shane, when you pair Tipperary 16 against Kilkenny 08, like two of the most convincing all Ireland winners in recent memory. Yeah, without doubt, because Tipperary more or less walked to that All Ireland other than the game against Galway in the All Ireland semi final that year. That was one of those classics. Tipper up against it, Bubbles O'Dwyer comes off the bench, scores one of those beautiful goals where he's more or less, I think John McGrath had fed him, and he was more or less right on the end line, and he battered it into the ground and uh, got it past Colin Callan. But Tipper were in trouble other than that. In the final, yeah, Kilkenny were, I would say, Kilkenny kept with Tip for a long, long time and even were ahead in the second half, I think, early on. But it was kind of like the dam burst after that and, you know, all the question marks over Brian Cody, should he have moved Joey Holden off Seamus Callan and Joey Holden was absolutely thrown to the wolves. Great ball going in, completely on his own against the lad who's physically bigger, very fast. So he was kind of thrown to the wolves that way. Kilkenny in 2008, I mean, this is obviously the high point of what they did in terms of just playing really exciting, open, exciting hurling and battering teams. But the quality of the opposition wasn't exactly amazing. And you could definitely question the quality of the opposition in 2016 for Tipperary as well. Um, you might have thoughts on that yourself. Do you think one team had a harder path than the other? No, i definitely say that Tipperary in 16 had a harder path because they had to beat Galway, who were perennial contenders and very, very close and would obviously go on and win the All-Ireland a year later. So if you said, if you're if you're looking at it from a farm basis, I'd say Tipperary's farm is probably stronger. Um, it's funny, though, because everybody kind of almost eulogises about the 3.30 that Kilkenny scored in 2008. But obviously Tip put up 2.29 in the All-Ireland final in 16. And they didn't put it up against, you know, a Waterford side that hadn't won in All-Ireland in, you know, 50 or 60 years. They put it up against a Kilkenny side that were going for three in a row. So the stock of that, to me, is is, is almost higher than, yeah, it, it, the Kilkenny performance in 08 was a complete performance. You'd have to wonder, like, were, were Waterford, like, kind of like rabbits caught in headlights? Because they kind of were. They didn't really know what was going on. Whereas... Tipperary did that to a Kilkenny team and to a manager that has more experience than anyone else on that level. And if you look at the, I suppose if you, if, from the flip side, if you look at the Kilkenny team in 16, TJ Reid was off form, Richie Hogan was probably a bit off form. If you go through maybe some of the names, you know, and you compare them with the OA team, it's not the same. But Kil- Tipperary were absolutely clinical in fairness in the last. In fairness, it's been a common team in a couple of the All Ireland wins. 2010 was the same. Uh, Tipperary were well ahead at the end and it was you knew the, the result with 10 minutes to go 16 was the same and last year was the same so 229 for Tipperary is seriously seriously impressive and probably doesn't get the kudos that it deserves with 2008 always eulogised as you know the best or the most complete All-Ireland performance but the quality of opposition varied massively from Waterford in 08 to Tip beating Kilkenny in 16 You probably have to say that both Tipperary and Kilkenny beat teams that weren't at their high point because that Watford team had probably just gone down from the level that they'd been at it between 2004 and 2007 when they probably should have won their All-Ireland at that stage. This was a Watford team just not playing the same free flow and stuff. Players probably just slightly past their peak. The thing with Kilkenny then is some of the big stars had just left the stage the likes of JJ Laney for example and Michael Fenley got injured in the semi-final and you know, we've seen him just retire from club hurling now, where he was still so influential in that back-to-back All-Ireland uh, glory for Ballyhale. But he got himself injured in the semi-final against Watford. I think he did his his Achilles yeah, in that replay, and he was having a storming game. So what difference would he have made in the final? Would it have meant that TJ Reid wouldn't have started in midfield, unusually wearing the number eight jersey? It just looked odd. So from that point of view, again, you could really pick holes in what either team beat. Uh, you definitely could, to be fair. Um, I, I think I, I think one of the major differences this is 08 is Kilkenny going for three in a row, and it's like, uh, you know, this is their crowning achievement almost. This is this is when they were at their absolute pomp, delivered a brilliant performance. If I know it's hypothetical, but if Tipperary were going for two or three in a row in 16 and delivered that performance, we'd probably be talking about it in a similar vein. It's maybe we don't talk about it in a similar vein because. You know, they hadn't won one since 10. 
and then there was a gap of a couple of years and they hadn't won one since 19. Whereas if that had been on the back of winning an All-Ireland the year before, uh, it probably would have been different. Maybe that's why, like, that is that is rated as Kilkenny's best probably ever performance, particularly in, in a big game. But, like, I'm not saying there's question marks over that like that, but maybe... Yeah, the quality of, the, of opposition is just not the same as what Tipperary beat in 16. Um, and like that Kilkenny team, you'd expect them to do that to, to a water team like that, an inexperienced team. That, that's what they always did. Whereas Tipper were able to do it to you know a, se- a seasoned enough outfit with some seriously, seriously good players. The likes of TJ and Richie, obviously, who were hurled here in 14 and 15. And then they were kind of swatted aside in 16. Just interesting, some of the matchups and that, that would come out if you paired Kilkenny 08. And, and tip 16 and I know Carl Barrett in 16 a flying Carl Barrett no more than he was last year against you know a flying Eddie Brennan fast Eddie would have been an unbelievable matchup yeah they'd have absolutely I think that in itself would have been a sideshow even if the two of them were isolated and good ball going in that would have been a joy to watch I'm just going to bring the teams up on screen and quickly run through them so that Kilkenny team in 2008 PJ Ryan and goals Michael Kavanagh, Noel Hickey and Jackie Turlin, the full back line. Tommy Walsh, Brian Hogan and JJ Delaney. So that probably would have been that trio, that launch pad at its absolute pomp. Chaff is Patrick who was flying and Derek Ling. Martin Comerford, Richie Power and Owen Larkin. And then a full forward line of Eddie Brennan, Henry Shefflin and Aidan Taggy forward team. We'll probably come back to that in a minute, the difference between the two full forward lines. Then the Tipperary team, Darren Gleeson in goals. Carl Barrett, James Barry, Michael Cahill. James Kendi, Ronan Maher, Porrick Maher, Brennan Maher and Michael Breen, Dan McCormack, Bonner Maher, Noel McGrath and John O'Dwyer, Seamus Callan and John McGrath. So to talk about those two full forward lines, that Tipperary for, for forward line scored 221, 215 from play, whereas that Kilkenny one scored 215, 29 from play. Yeah, outrageous from fairness. I, I've never seen the like, but it still mystifies me to this day why Kilkenny didn't like I don't know whether drop someone back or play a bit deeper they absolutely hung uh, Joey Holden out to dry that day he was he was basically thrown to the wolves and it was just it was perfect ball coming in it was funny that's not usually a Kilkenny kind of a style tactic they usually would have you know the centre back would be sitting back it was almost like I remember watching from the stands and it was almost like they were all just playing their own game that day and that, that can't be the way, because the full back line, you can't do it. You can't just play, half-backs can't just play their own game. They have to protect the full back line. They didn't. And Callum went to absolute town. Um, Kilkenny would have had a better spread of scores in 08 probably than Tipperary did in the in the 16 final, because the full forward line did so much damage. What did you say? It was 221? 21 combined, yeah, like that was, it was unbelievable, like the ball that they were getting in and the space that they were getting in, it was absolutely perfect for forwards, Um, whereas Kilkenny, their full forward, like Eddie Brennan was probably obviously the man that went to town, and he, that's, that's the year he should have got man of the match for the, the second year running in the All-Ireland final, wasn't it in 08, he, should, he got it in 07, and Brian Cody was famously, <laughs> famously given the man of the match award, but um, it's, it's, ser- it's serious scoring, like that's, that's frightening, that's the sort of stuff that frightens teams. That sort of like having a full forward line, having forward lines that can do that type of damage. It's and that's why you're able to put up that massive score because you have lads of those caliber, particularly in your full forward line, that are going to really put the knife to the throat of teams. The more I think about it, that there's an awful lot of different threats in that click any team. Like I already mentioned, the half back line, that midfield might have the slight edge on Tipperary that half forward line Owen Larkin was in his absolute pomp at the time and you're it's, going through it Shane it's literally you, you can't, can't find, find the weakness. weakness like you know if if Henry has a little off day today Eddie Brennan and Taggy stand up you know if Owen Larkin has an off day Martin Comerford and Richie Power stand up you know you can't hold all six of them on a given day if you hold three of them you would be doing well but that means three of them will still do well if you know what I mean yeah like the Barrett versus Eddie Brennan one would be brilliant to watch but I think Henry Shefton and, and Taggy Fogarty might have a bit of joy on James Barry and Michael Cahill. Like Michael Cahill in particular, I mean both lads have won their All-Stars, but Michael Cahill in particular had brilliant years, especially in the early part of his career. But towards 2016, he probably wasn't quite the same player as he used to be. So that Kilkenny team on the front foot that much would be tough for any full back line, never mind ones that probably quite weren't where they used to be. Yeah, ah, uh, listen... It's it's very it's very it's you can't really pick holes in the Kilkenny team. Like I know we're playing devil's advocate here, and 
that that was their obviously their best All Ireland performance and maybe probably their best year. But it is very very hard to actually pick holes in it when you if you're putting you know the goalie against goalie or putting two against two, three against three. Like if the points add up, if it's a, if it's 150 is the max. I'd, I'd definitely be saying like Kilkenny are getting 136, 137 maybe, whereas Tipper maybe down 131, 132 if you're marking them all out of 10, 1 to 15. Um, I would definitely still be get, get still be, still be giving Kilkenny the edge, but I don't think it's as cut and dry to say, oh that Kilkenny team is definitely the best team, or that's definitely the best All Ireland win. I'm, I'm not 100 sure of that. Yeah, I, I I can see Kilkenny going through here, but I don't think. Just anyone who lazily says sure, it's Kilkenny 2008 greatest team of all time and that's it ignores the fact that the path through was not tough. I mean, you were part of the Offaly side that didn't put up an unreal resistance in the first round, you know, called spade a spade. In five minutes we did. <laughs> well, that's the usual. Uh, you do well to get 25 minutes of it these days. But like, that tip team beat more, the full forward lane line scored more. To get 229 versus 330 against the team that was back to back versus the team that hadn't done it. I just don't think it's one of these things where it's absolutely cut and dry. I'm fairly sure Kilkenny will go through here, but I just don't think you can completely uh, dismiss this and say, oh, it's one way traffic and that's it. Now, the public will vote on him. You work away, do the right thing, by the way, but uh, it's just not cut and dry. Final words no, here. Definitely don't, definitely don't think it's cut and dry, um, but I think, I think you're already happy as long as Tipperary 2010 go through I think you're happy enough because as long as the team that stopped the drive for five go through um, they'll actually meet in the next round I think if the two of them go through the voting has started on the on the tip 2010 versus Limerick 2018 so it'll be interesting to see which one of them goes through as well but uh, yeah it's Kilkenny just edging it for me but uh, as, again I, it's not a clear path through or you know a clear winner like a lot of people are suggesting and at the end of the day no more than that Sunday game, team of the team of the Sunday game era. The public will, the public will make the difference. So uh, it'd be interesting to see who they get behind.